Uh, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, good. It's nice to be here, isn't it? it it's great. It's such a change to be able to do something in Liverpool. Well, I, I actually wanted to say that it's an amazing matte painting. We're actually at the Four Seasons. <laughs> and it is, uh, you know. Um, but being serious, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of both of you guys, and uh, congrats on the movie. Oh, um, thank you so much. What, one of the things that I find fascinating or really interesting is that you both had early, you had success in the early 90s in, in the UK in making movies, and you didn't transition to Hollywood. You stayed in the UK and continued making movies here. Um, can you sort of talk about, you know, was there temptation to go? What was the motivation for staying? That's so, um, it's a good question. In my case, the motivation came before. So I went to America when I was about 27. Somebody asked me to come out and write a film. And I really realized that I didn't know quite what I was doing and that it was crucial when I was typing to know if someone in Boston, what they would have for lunch how they would talk to their friends, what music they'd listen to. So as I flew home, having failed to write the film, I said, I'm gonna set every film that I ever write again in the street in which I live. And I actually <laughs> did it in Notting Hill, and this movie is set in Suffolk. It's pretty well in the town in which, uh, in which I live and in which Ed Sheeran lives. In which Ed Sheeran comes from. Yeah, yeah and, and like music for me was like, I, I'm a mad, as he is, both of us kind of mad music devotees. And I love kind of America, lots of America, but the music here, you know, and especially the stuff that comes out of this town and the town Manchester, which is about 20 miles over that way, it's just like unbelievable nourishment, really. So I've never been inclined to um, kind of leave that behind. I've always wanted to be, have that the whole time really so yeah but I love working in it I made a couple of films in America love working there but based, based but you're correct I mean I think we're kind of like we are most of our work is based here and we, and we have remained here in Britain yeah that's what Tim Bevan who's working title of producer that's when he introduces us on stage before a screening that's what he tends to say about us these yeah. are the two who stayed behind everybody <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious uh, this obviously doesn't work without the Beatles at what point in the process are, of putting this thing together, of writing it, are you saying, okay, well, how are we going to get the rights? How are we going to, you know, and you know what I mean? Because without yeah, them saying Yeah, I think yes. I was reassured we could get the rights. I mean, I think we checked uh, before I wrote the full script. Because, in fact, you don't have to, it's not as complicated as getting the masters. So you just, they, and so they heard who was going to make the movie and thought it's probably not something we'll say no to. The Beatles don't then have to say, oh, we think it's a great idea and it's anything to do with us. But um, we were reassured that they, we would be able to get access to the songs. I'm always curious about the editing process because that's the final rewrite. I'm curious, what did you learn in the editing room maybe that you weren't expecting? Uh, I guess I'll start with that. Pre-lap the songs. So pre-lap is when you start the next scene in this scene. And with songs, because you need to complete a certain amount of them to feel like you've experienced it. So, you know, that's a time issue. And what you do, and it's our editor, John Harris, introduced this style where he would pre-lap the song like 10, 15 seconds before the scene happened so that you were started to feel, by the time the song is completed, you feel satisfied that you've heard yeah. a verse and a chorus, you know, or at least, and that it feels like you've experienced a song. And yet, You've actually, it's not just been stop, here's a song, stop again, here's another song. It feels like it flows through the arteries of the whole experience rather than just being single scenes like that. Yeah. And that's important because you are, you haven't got a variety except that the Beatles were infinitely var variable. They're wonderful choice. Uh, you know, their creativity was incredible v variety. But it's all by one band, really, and there's 15 of them. But you know, I don't think, I hope, you never feel like, oh, God, here's another song. Oh, God, yeah. here's another song. I mean, uh, from my point of view, it was the same thing which I've had to learn in every movie, which is you've got to be delicate with the emotional story. We did a few changes about, you know, what, what happened between the characters and particularly whether or not Himesh was allowed to flirt with someone else. Yes. And, and, and he wasn't. Um, you know, it's bad enough him not being in love with Lily, but the idea that he would ever do anything wrong. So always in movies, you, you're absolutely right. 
it's it's the last rewrite. It's the last rewrite, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, how long was your first cut compared to the finished film? Well, we took it about, there's about 30 minutes of DVD extras, you know, set extra scenes that we've actually had material. Yeah. Well, I know about 25 minutes of that. And that was probably it, really. We, I mean, it had a good tempo right from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it's too long to begin with, they always are, because you include everything. But then you learn from including everything what you don't, what you think you don't need. And you could never realise that if it, we were all geniuses. You'd have realised that ages ago and saved the money of shooting those scenes. But you need to shoot them, experience them, and, and see how they all stand up against each other. And always with jokes, you know, the movies, it's, it's aiming to be funny, and the first time you screen it, there are a couple of, you of, realize. of, of stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> you all you realize. So I've been saying to Danny for months, Danny, I promise you, take my word for it. This, this is, is one this of the funniest jokes in the this history is of the cinema. And then, and and then you screen it, and you say, silence. okay, that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's actually a lot of, that's like, so 25 minutes of deleted scenes? Uh, or is it, cause that, that, that's all, I was, I'm a big fan of the film and I cannot wait to see what you guys cut out. Well, that's very sweet of you. I did a movie called Pirate Radio in America and the first cut of that was five and a quarter hours. <laughs> I don't and I think it was the best version. It was like a very, very long documentary. But being serious for a second, with something like that and with the advent of streaming, isn't there, if you have a cut of that, is there any way of getting it out there to actually, because I would totally watch that. Well, I, 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 I will try and access it. You know, they talk about the director's cut. I always describe it as the director's half cut. In other words, it's when the director's drunk. He says, no, a, it was very good, the five so hour versions of the masterpiece, exactly, I think. I think movies are perhaps cut for a reason. But maybe streaming will change that. Maybe yeah. streaming will let people access. I always thought it would come about that people would, you see it a bit with trailers, that people would cut their own versions of films. You know, they'd want, they'd want to, oh, the, final, the final draft, the final, final draft will be the fans saying, oh no, I saw it like this. Yeah. I'd like you to do it like this. And then they could, and they'd post their version. Those kind of things will happen, I think. Yeah, I would love to, I, I have to go, but I would love to see you know the alt versions and also as just a film person I, I want to see the difference and yeah. you know people can learn from it and yeah. you know well no it is look, editing is one of the oh. it's it's my favorite bit of the process because the movie keeps getting better yeah you know because often you will you will when you're writing I, I, when I wrote Notting Hill I wrote I finished it and I had to write the whole second half again so, but there, it tends to get better, doesn't it? Yes, in the edit. absolutely. It's a wonderful process. It's one of the hidden jobs that isn't really given the credit that it deserves, really. It tends to be about cinematographers or designers or writers or directors, but actually editors. Whoa. Completely. Try and do without an editor.